Hi everybody, welcome to this intermediate level episode of Engineering the Jigsaw. Intermediate episode number one, how to count like a computer. In this episode, we're going to have a bit of a think about how numbers can be represented. And you might want to have a piece of paper and a pencil handy while you're watching this episode. You might want to jot some stuff down and, and try some things as we're going. Before we go too far, and maybe while you're digging out your pencil and bit of paper, Let's quickly define what a number is. So according to Wikipedia, and this is a, a, a really good definition for what we're going to talk about today. A number is a mathematical object that is used to count, measure and label. And within EE engineering, there's often a specific way that we think and treat numbers. And it's especially the case when we're describing the data that's being transferred over in vehicle networks. So Here's the, the tie into engineering the jigsaw and our focus area. So let's throw our minds back, cast our minds back. <clears throat> Excuse me. In the very distant past, you may have written down numbers that splits them into units or, or ones, tens, hundreds, and so on. So for example, with the number 4079, which is four times a thousand plus zero times a hundred plus seven times ten plus nine times one. You may have written down a table splitting the four thousands into a column, the zero hundreds into a column, the seven tens into a column, and the nine units or ones into a column. And this is a tabular representation of a number. Actually, everything here is a representation of a number. The number 4079 exists independently of whether I represent it in words when I'm speaking, whether it's digits written down or an arithmetic sum, as, as we see, or the, the tabular representation. So that number is, is kind of the number independent of representation. Now, well, there's a little bit of complexity this can cause us intellectually we'll, we'll, that we'll get to. Um, but first, let's consider the numbers that sit behind the column headings. So we have one or, or units, 10, 100, 1000. And if we wanted to get larger numbers in our table, of course, we'd have 10,000 and so on. And eventually we didn't need numbers like millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions. Luckily, we can simplify some of this writing, all these zeros that we end up writing, using powers or exponentiation to give us a shorthand. So we can write 100, which is equal to 10 times 10, as 10 to the power of 2 also 10 squared in English, but 10 to the power of 2. 1,000, 10 times 10 times 10 is 10 to the power of 3. So the, the power that we're raising 10 to tells us the number of zeros that are following the 1 and the number of 10s that we're multiplying together. Now, it, it, we used, I, I've chosen deliberately to start with powers of 10 because it's quite intuitive how the, how the numbers grow. We're adding a zero every time we, we increase the, the power by one. So a million is six tens multiplied together. It has six zeros. It is 10 to the power of six. <clears throat> Let's write our table again. But before we do that, there's two special things we need to know about powers. Firstly, the result of raising any number to the power of 1 is the original number. So 10 to the power of 1 is 10. And the result of raising any number to the power of 0 is 1, or unit. And when we think about uh, our 1 followed by a number of zeros that corresponds to the power, it's very obvious when we're working with 10s as, as our as our base that we're, we're raising to a power. So we have one zero after a one for 10 to the one, we have no zeros after a one for, for 10 to the zero and, and so on. Same thing applies for other numbers raised to powers. Any number to the power of zero is always one. And any number to the power of one is that, that number. Now, there's a little bit of complexity here, which is because it's so common for us to use base 10 or decimal numbers for counting that we forget that this is a representation of a number. We have a decimal representation. And in our table, of course, 
the headings are all numbers that we can represent as powers of 10. And each column holds a single digit, which represents a number from 0 to 9. The consequence is that we can then rewrite our table that we saw before with some more columns, but using our shorthand, and we can write from 10 to the 5 down to 10 to 0, or more accurately from 10 to 0 upwards because we're increasing. And of course, the first couple of columns we're going to fill with zeros because we don't have any 10,000s or 100,000s. We're starting just with 4,000s. So we enter our 4, we enter our 0 for 100s, we enter our 7 for the tens, we enter our nine for the for the ones. And we have split the number 4079 in a, in a way that aligns to that bit of maths we saw earlier, the arithmetic expression. And of course, we can take a similar approach if we want to represent numbers in other bases or number systems. So with base two or binary, we, we can do a similar thing. Now, binary has two digits, 0 and 1. I should have mentioned base 10 has 10 digits because we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10 digits, 0 to, to 9. And of course, binary is what we find inside computers, inside microprocessors, inside microcontrollers. And in this term, in, in here, we typically talk about bits and maybe bytes, which, and bits is just binary digits. So to start, to represent numbers in binary, we rewrite our table using powers of two in the column headers. And we often use 8-bit bytes when we do this. And this is just a convention. Some computing systems in the past used 6 bits, some used 9 bits. And that's why if you read some standards, they talk about octets, with oct, of course, is a prefix that represents the number 8. The first 8 powers of 2, which are for 0 to 7 are 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and 128. So to represent a number which fits into 8 bits or 1 byte, we write our table like so. You may want to quickly write this down now. So 2 to the 7, 2 to the 6, 2 to the 5, 2 to the 4, 2 to the 3, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 0. Let's do an example. Let's fill our table with the binary representation for the decimal number that we call 60. So six zero. Now to do this, what we need to do is we need to subtract the number that's represented by our column header away from our number. And if, if we can do that, leaving a, a result which is zero or greater, we, we enter a one. If we can't do it, so if we go negative, we will enter a zero. And we carry the result of our subtraction through. Now, the first two columns, two to the seven, two to the six, we cannot subtract from 60 and leave a positive result. So we put zeros in the first two columns. Column two to the five, we can subtract two to the power five from 60. It leaves 28. So we enter a 1 in this column. We take the 28 to the 2 to the 4 column. We can subtract 2 to the 4 from 28. It leaves 12. So we'll enter 1 and go to the 2 to the 3 column. We can subtract 2 to the 3 from 12. It leaves 4. So again, we enter 1 and we go to the next column, which is 2 to the power of 2. Now, 2 to the power of 2 is 4. So we can do this and it leaves a remainder of zero. So we enter one and because we've now hit zero, we can put zero into the remaining columns as a shortcut. So what we have is we have this lovely palindromic number in binary. So it's the same forwards as it is backwards, two zeros, four ones, and then two zeros. And we can write this down using a prefix to denote that we have the binary representation of a number to avoid confusion with what we commonly write down, which is the decimal representations. So we write 0b and then we pad with two zeros if we want to exactly represent one byte, four ones and then two more zeros. Now, of course, 
with large numbers, this starts to get quite tedious and also error prone as a human being. Binary is just really cumbersome. Um, so, for example, and we'll just have a little shortcut here. We'll use 0D to represent decimal. With 0D, 1 million, to write that in binary is just a whole bunch of zeros and ones. I'm not even going to try to say it. It's there on the screen. Fortunately, we can use base 16 or hexadecimal, or hex even for short, as a shorthand. The reason for this is that a hex digit can represent the same number as can be represented with four bits. And hex uses 16 digits, hence the name hex, uh, decimal, so hex for six and decimal for 10. So we have the, the 10 decimal digits, zero to nine, and to that we add A, B, C, D, E, and F, six more digits. And we can then denote our hex representation with the prefix 0x. So for example, if we have decimal 15, which is binary 1, 1, 1, 1. <laughs> oh, I told you binary was cumbersome. Um, we can write this as 0xf, which is a lot easier. An advantage of using hex then is that two hex digits may be used to represent a number that is able to be represented by a single 8-bit byte. So within an 8-bit byte, we can represent numbers up to decimal 255 or eight ones in binary. Simply in hexadecimal, it's hex FF. Much easier. And our 4079 in decimal, we can represent that in binary as a load of ones and zeros or the much easier hexadecimal 0FEF. And again, we're, we're zero padding here just to, to get into the habit of, of zero padding. Of course, we can write our table in terms of powers of 16 to help us represent hexadecimal numbers. And or to write, represent numbers in hexadecimal, I should maybe say more accurately. And with eight hex digits, we can represent numbers that are up to something over 4 billion decimal. So with eight, that's eight Fs in hexadecimal digits. So for, if we pick a number which is less than four, 4 billion decimal, so if we take the 10 decimal digits and, and line them up with zero at the, at the end for the ones, so 1 billion, 234 million, 567,890, we can convert this into hex. And the way we do it is a similar process to what we've done before, except now we're going to count how many times a particular power of seven, sorry, a particular power of 16 can be deducted from our decimal number, starting in the column for 16 to seven. So how many times can we deduct 16 to the power seven from 1 billion, 234, blah, 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 blah. We can do that four times. So in our column for 16 to the 7, we enter four. We give it rain, get a remainder of 160,826,066. How many times can we deduct 16 to the power 6 from this? Well, it's nine times. So we enter nine in our 16 to the 6 column, and we carry the result, which is 9,831,122. How many times can we take away 16 to the power 5? Nine times again. Again, so we enter another nine, this time in the 16 to the five column. For the 16 to the fours, well, we had a remainder of 393,938. We can take 16 to the four away from this six times, so we can enter a six. We now, though, have a remainder of 722. We cannot deduct 16 to the power of three from 722, leaving a, a, a zero or positive remainder, so we enter a zero. For our next column, which is 16 to the power of 2, we can deduct that twice from 722. So we will enter 2 into the 16 to the power of 2 column. We now have decimal 710, which, sorry, decimal 210, and we can deduct 16 to the power of 1 from that 13 times in decimal 13. Now, decimal 13 is hexadecimal D, so we enter D in this column. That leaves a remainder of 2. 2 decimal, 2 hex, same thing, put it in the column for 16 to 0. You should end up with 
a hex number which is 499602D2. And that's your hexadecimal representation of that number. And the binary, of course, you can then calculate out if you if you want to. Again, just loads of zeros and ones, not going to waste time reading it out. So as a summary, in this episode, we've considered how numbers can be represented by words. I've been speaking and representing numbers with my speech. We've also considered how they can be represented by arithmetic expressions. We've seen how they can be wrapped represented in tabular forms and using digits from different bases or number systems, which is a little bit hard to grasp at first because we're so used as human beings to working in base 10. But we're just dealing with representations of numbers and other systems such as computers deal with numbers in a different way. We've talked though then about how, especially for humans, Numbers in binary representation can be particularly cumbersome and horrible. <laughs> um, so we've then gone into how hex or hexadecimal base 16 gives humans a convenient shorthand for the binary representations of numbers. I hope that's all clear for you. I hope you've enjoyed this first intermediate level episode. If you have any questions, if you have any ideas for topics for episodes, please leave a comment where you found this video. Please feel free to drop us an email to our special email address, engineering.jigsaw at vector.com. I really hope you've enjoyed this first intermediate episode. I'm Cunningham from Vector GB. See you again soon for another episode. Bye. Hey Stefan. Yeah, I'm in I'm in I'm in I'm in the studio now. Yeah, I just uh, just finished filming the f the first intermediate episode, how to count like a computer. Uh Oh. Uh no, I, I actually no, I I didn't actually tell people how to count like a computer. It's a it's a bit misleading, isn't it? Actually, I um but I, I, they're, they're still they're still there. I think I think they're still there. Uh, I can I'll, I'll I'll do it now. I'll do it I'll do it now quickly before they go. Yeah yeah. I'll, I'll speak to you soon. Can we? Yeah okay. I'll, I'll call you back. Right bye. So um, that that was that was my colleague um, Stefan in the production team. He's he just just reminded me that we we called the episode "How to Count Like a Computer" and, and I've realised that I, I didn't actually teach you that. So. I'll do it now quickly. So um, there's a bit of finger yoga involved. I'm going to use two hands, so I'm going to uh, cheat, cheat slightly. So we, we start obviously one, then we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ugh, this one's horrible. Ten, eleven. No, it's not. Is it? Because that was A. A, B, C, D, E, F, one, zero, one, 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 two, one, three, one, uh, four, one, five, one, six, one, seven, one, eight, one, nine, one, A, one, B, one, C, one, D, one, E, one F, one F with one hand. That's equivalent to 31 in decimal. Imagine what you could do if you bring the other hand in as well. See you again soon.